Hello, and welcome back. In today's Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight 10 things you didn't know about Byron Allen. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we celebrate Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Many of you may not have ever heard of him, but Byron Allen is one of the most powerful African Americans in Hollywood. Byron Allen is an American comedian and television producer who was a familiar presence on TV in the early 1980s as he hosted several specials, game shows, and talk shows. However, after several years in show business, Allen realized that the real power wasn't in front of the camera, but behind it. Thus, in 1993, he started his own production company, Entertainment Studios, and since has climbed to be the biggest independent producer and distributor of TV programs in the world. Although names like Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry dominate the discussion around Black Hollywood power players, Allen is quietly building an astonishing successful entertainment empire. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring Byron Allen. So without further ado, let's get started. 1. Byron was born in Detroit, but grew up in Los Angeles. Allen was born on April 22, 1961, in Detroit, Michigan. He moved with his single mother to Los Angeles, California in 1968, at a time of social unrest in the city. Allen's interest in show business began during his childhood, when he would accompany his mother to NBC Studios in Burbank, where she worked as a publicist. Free to roam the sound stages, Allen would sneak onto The Tonight Show set, sit behind Johnny Carson's desk, and play talk show host. Allen graduated from Fairfax High School in 1979. After graduation, he attended University of Southern California. 2. Byron started his comedy career at the early age of 14. At age 14, Allen put together his first stand-up routine and began appearing on amateur night at comedy clubs throughout the Los Angeles area. Comedian Jimmy Walker saw Allen's stand-up act and was so impressed that he invited the 14-year-old comedian to join his comedy writing team alongside promising young comedians Jay Leno and David Letterman. At age 18, Allen made his television debut on The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. One of his earliest roles was as a regular presenter on the NBC series Real People during the show's entire run. 3. Byron launched Entertainment Studios in 1993. Allen's foray into television production began in Los Angeles in 1993, when he founded Entertainment Studios with the launch of his first series, Entertainers with Byron Allen. This was a weekly one-hour series profiling the current stars of film and television. As he grew his company, Entertainment Studios became a force in the industry as it produces, distributes, and sells advertising for 40 television series, making it the largest independent producer-distributor of first-run syndicated programming for broadcast television globally. In 2009, Allen launched eight 24-hour HD cable television and broadcast networks simultaneously, Automotive TV, Cars TV, Comedy TV, ESTV, Justice Central, My Destination TV, Pets TV, and Recipe TV. The company that he originally launched from his dining room now has more than 600 employees, its own studio space, and administrative offices in Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Raleigh, and Denver. Entertainment Studios boasts over 35 million viewers and its yearly revenue tops 100 million. 4. Byron acquires the Weather Channel for $300 million. Looking to expand his film and TV production company into a major media business, Allen acquired the television assets of the Weather Channel for approximately $300 million in March 2018. The deal includes the famous cable TV network, but not online assets such as the website weather.com and related mobile apps which were acquired by IBM in January 2016. 
Allen said he wants to invest more into the Weather Channel, expanding both its international and local distribution. It's part of the broader strategy to invest into what he said would be billions of dollars in the media and entertainment industry. The Weather Channel reaches over 80 million homes. Five, Byron acquires the Grio. Allen acquired thegrio.com in 2016. The Grio is a news and entertainment website for the African American audience. It is one of the first African American oriented websites to be launched by a major media company as it was a product of NBC at its 2009 founding. As of 2018, Allen is planning to reboot it as a video centric destination for black millennials. Allen's vision for the Grio.com is for it to become a multi platform media powerhouse with digital properties, television and film projects, events, as well as e commerce. The Grio ranked 11th in average monthly unique visitors in 2016 on the list of African American oriented websites with an average unique visitor count of over 2 million a month. We would like to thank Hayden T. Joseph and Company. They are an international tax team who can help American entrepreneurs and business owners expand and operate internationally. In particular, Hayden T. Joseph & Company helps American business owners expand to Southeast Asia. Visit www.htj.tax or check out their link in the description box below. 6. Byron has a net worth of $400 million. Allen has a current net worth of $400 million. However, after the acquisition of the Weather Channel, Allen claims that entertainment studios' investments are valued at around $1 billion. Byron's net worth will continue to rise since he owns 100% of his company. The comic-turned-media mogul recently purchased a Beverly Hills mansion for $17 million to add to his long list of assets. 7. Byron is pioneering a new business model for TV deals. This is how the typical TV production model works. The TV production company sells a show idea to a TV network. The TV network in turn pays the production company a flat fee every episode to produce a full season. Then the TV network is responsible for securing advertisers as their goal is to make more money off ads than the cost of the actual show production. Byron does something that no other production company does. Rather than relying on the traditional model, Byron gives his shows away for free. Instead of charging the TV network for each episode produced, he picks up the tab for production and talent. In exchange, Byron is given the right to sell 50% of the show's available advertising time, which he sells directly to Procter & Gamble, McDonald's, PepsiCo, and many more. This model has proven to be very profitable for him as he continues to reap more revenue off of the ads than the production cost of his episodes. 8. Byron filed $30 billion lawsuits alleging racial discrimination. Allen really wants corporate America to do business with black America. He believes that this is the pathway to a stronger America and better race relations and he's very serious in his mission to press for economic inclusion rights for persons of color. So much so that he has taken aim at the practices of Charter Communications and Comcast Corporation through an aggressive legal action in the tune of $30 billion. Allen's cases hinges on a little remembered law from 1866 mandating economic inclusion rights for newly freed slaves. Section 1981 of the 1866 Civil Rights Act, combined with the 14th Amendment, was supposed to protect the recently freed slaves from facing racial discrimination when they tried to go into business for themselves. Allen asserts, I took that law and put it on steroids. He has a $20 billion claim on appeal with Comcast and a $10 billion case pending against Charter. He maintains they are violating civil rights laws by failing to do business in meaningful numbers with African American media entrepreneurs such as himself. Although the lawsuits are still in motion, changes to the game are already being made thanks to Allen. 
charter, for one, has added more racial and gender diversity to a board that had been exclusively white men. He was able to reach a settlement with AT&T, who he sued for having no carriage agreements with 100% African-American-owned media companies. Their new partnership helped him find a home for some of his programming on DirecTV and UVerse. 9. Byron is expanding into the movies industry. Allen is now part of a wave of independent distributors that have entered the movie market to make lower budget movies. In 2015, entertainment studios became part of a relatively new set of players focused on specialty movies that rely on critical acclaim and awards buzz. But Allen acknowledges the challenges that streaming services, such as Netflix, presents to the movie industry by gobbling up acting talent and attracting more filmmakers into their arena. Therefore, he's proposing yet another radical idea that may help theaters adapt. Theater owners themselves investing into the movies. Allen hopes that he can work with theater owners to preserve the movie industry's business model in the face of competition from not only streaming services, but video games as well. If Allen is able to succeed at yet another pioneering idea that convinces theaters to invest into content that they already help market and brand, he's creating a win-win situation for his studio and the film industry as a whole. 10. Byron's Advice Allen has a bit of advice for aspiring content producers. He says, People have an enormous opportunity now because I didn't have the internet 25 years ago. Now you have global distribution at the tip of your finger. You can create and produce content and be global. Believe in yourself and believe in your vision. Don't waver. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.